All right, so let's go ahead and get started, inshallah ta'ala, with the uh, 10th juz. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So, um, inshallah ta'ala, today we're going to be uh, going through Surah Al-Anfal, the, the second part of Surah Al-Anfal, and Surah Al-Tawbah as well. So we move into uh, juz uh, 10. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, I'm, I'll probably... Uh oh, sorry. Looks like we have connection. Inshallah, I'll, I'll direct you guys as well to check out Sheikh Yasser Rajas's reflections on it. Uh, inshallah, time maybe I'll post the comment as well. But but really, when it comes to these particular surahs and ayat, which have a lot of wartime ayat, a lot of verses that are are, are very much so in regards to certain battles that took time in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A lot of times, these are the verses that can really, really be abused and really, really be taken out of context. So it's important for us, inshallah ta'ala, to really be able to contextualize everything and to uh, to understand everything and also to take benefit. There is still a point why all of these ayat are there for our benefit. So as we said, Surah Al-Anfal, uh, the first 40 um, ayat are really all about the Battle of Badr. It was revealed after the Battle of Badr. It gives us an extensive commentary on the Battle of Badr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supporting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and supporting the believers in a very, very difficult time, um, sending the angels to, you know, to stand by them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches them the lesson that basically uh, is, is highlighted in, in the first few surahs of the Qur'an, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports you, if God is on your side, uh, then who can be against you, right? There's no one that's going to be able to overcome you. So, so long as you work out your internal issues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you. And uh, it's really interesting here, in verse 48, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the perspective on the other side. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ That the devil was speaking, the Satan was speaking to the other side. Shaytan was speaking to the other side. Um, and he said to them, لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمُ Okay, there, that there is no way that anyone is going to be able to overcome you from the people. And he even says to them, وَإِنِّي uh, جَارٌ لَكُمْ That I am going to be the one to protect you. So the shaytan uh, gives a promise of sorts in the sense of inspiration to the other army, to the army that's coming to massacre the believers, that, you know, I'm with you, no one's going to overcome you, I will protect you, and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when those two armies met, and the Prophet ﷺ said the most disgraced day of the shaytan, the, most, the, the day that he felt the most disgraced, was the day that he showed up on the Battle of Badr, the day of Badr, and he saw Jibreel alayhi salam and his army of angels. When he saw Jibreel alayhi salam, he knew exactly how this was going to go. Shaytan was, uh, you know, recognized that this was a point of defeat. And once the two armies met, and once the Battle of Badr took place, and once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave vic victory to the believers, then he turned around and he said, Inni bari'un minkum, inni ara ma la tarawn, inni akhafullah, wallahu shadidul iqab. So he actually turned on his heels and he said, I'm disassociating myself from you. Indeed, I see what you don't see. Indeed, I fear Allah and Allah is severe in penalty. Basically, the shaytan knew as he saw Jibreel alayhi salam and the angels on the day of Badr that this was going to be uh, a victory for the believers and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help them. So he turned his, backs on them, his back on them as he turns his back on everyone that he leads astray, on everyone that he misleads uh, temporarily uh, and sometimes permanently. Uh, he does this on the day of judgment. He says, "Inni bari minkum," that I have nothing to do with you. Um, you know, he he does this in so many different ways, and realize that we just finished in Surah Al-A'raf the uh, you know the, the detailed description of how Shaytan tries to lead a person astray from all different directions. So here now in Surah Al-Anfal, you have an actual manifestation of these people that came out to kill the Prophet Sallallahu and kill their family members. Subhanallah, there there were fathers trying to kill their sons brothers trying to kill their brothers, and so on and so forth. And all of this is to tell them, is to tell us as well, look at how shaytan led these people astray. So this is an example of shaytan uh, doing zina, uh, uh, decorating a person's misguided actions to them. And in this case, an entire army that came to overtake uh, the Prophet ﷺ and the believers uh, after they ran them out of Mecca. On the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 53, 
ذلك بأن الله لم يكن مغير نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم وأن الله سميع عليم الله سبحانه وتعالى says Allah سبحانه وتعالى will not change a favor that he bestowed upon a people until they change that which is within themselves and indeed Allah is hearing and knowing so this idea of correcting the internal and the external will solve itself by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighted here for the first time. So again, the lesson of Badr was to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be, you know, to, to be righteous, to be morally upright, and to be together and not let the diseases of the past purge you and uh, and put you into failure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his help, and this is exactly what happened in Badr. And the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us uh, or not the first time, but but you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illustrating to us how the shaytan led this group of people astray after um, after giving us the, the conversation that shaytan had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which he promises Allah to lead us astray. Um, and realize here that with the with the disbelievers in Mecca that came to attack the Prophet sallam, it was shaytan who entered into Dara Nadwa into the gathering and and uh, and gave the plan on how to kill the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam shaytan was const- was actively plotting with the disbelievers in mecca against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the believers and badr was not just the humiliation of them but it was a disgrace to the shaytan as well that was plotting uh with them so that's the moral lesson right but then surah al-anfal sort of moves into some of the practical considerations after badr as well after laying out the spiritual uh, framework through which to view everything else. So for example, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into the sanctity of uh, of treaties. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, those that ahadta minhum, those that you took a treaty with, uh, that you don't break the pledge with them so long as they don't break the pledge with you. So the importance of honoring and sanctifying treaties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in verse 61 um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if they prefer peace, okay, if they go towards peace, if they incline towards uh, a silm, if they go towards peace, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then you should also incline towards peace, okay? وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيرُ عَلِيمُ And put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He is the hearing, He is the all hearing and the all knowing. Why is this important? Because Allah mentioned with Badr, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ الْقِتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ Fighting was prescribed upon you and you hate it. So it actually shows you right away that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is illustrating, is highlighting to us that the character of the Prophet sallallahu and the believers is that they did not prefer al-qital. They didn't look for battle. They didn't look for fighting. Fighting was not a goal in and of itself, right? In fact, it was something that was detested and put off until the battle of Badr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then reiterates here, in, 60, in verse 61, that if they choose to go towards peace, if the other side inclines towards peace, then grant them that peace, then go into treaties, go into peace. That's always preferable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And put your trust in Allah because there's a, hesit- there's a hesitation that we know they're going to break the treaty. And subhanAllah, the next surah, surah at tawbah is indeed people breaking the treaty, subhanAllah. So Allah is saying, honor the treaty, put your trust in Allah, uh, you know, incline towards peace as well. And then when they break the treaty, then that's when the, the, the new set of instructions comes, uh, which is going to be in the next surah, uh, which is also within this juz. Uh, and then so we find in surah, uh, in, in verse 65, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nabi harrid al-mu'minina ala al-qital, urge the believers to battle. If, um, if amongst you, you have 20 who are sabirun, 20 people amongst you that are patient, yaghlibu mi'atain, then they will be able to overcome 200. And if you have a hundred people that are steadfast, that are patient, then they will be able to overcome a thousand. So the idea here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu that, you know, as long as Allah is with you, even if you have a small number, it's never about numbers. And this is something that would carry on with the story of the Prophet sallallahu in many different battles that the believers were usually way outnumbered in all of the battles of the Prophet sallallahu They were way outnumbered. But Allah mentions here, that if a person has steadfastness and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they stay firm, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow them to overcome a much larger uh, number. In verse 70, there's uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya nabi, uh, min al-asra. So Allah actually urges kindness towards the prisoners of war. But here you have a particular statement that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being told to make towards the... Um, 
to make towards the captives. Say to those captives that are in your hands, إِنْ يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ خَيْرًا If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of goodness within your hearts, يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا مِمَّا أُخِذَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you something better than that which was taken away from you, and He will forgive you, and Allah is all forgiving, and Allah is all merciful. If I ever do people of Qur'an again, inshallah ta'ala I will, uh, at some point, I'll, I'll probably talk a lot more about this ayah, but I'll give you a brief overview of it right now. Al-Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went out against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Badr. He went out with the relatives, uh, you know, with, with the people of Mecca against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believers in the battle of Badr. But he was standing like, a, like an idol. That's how he's actually being described. That he clearly had no intention of, uh, of fighting. He clearly had no intention of killing the Prophet ﷺ or killing the believers. And the Prophet ﷺ, in fact, he made that announcement before the Battle of Badr that there are some people that came out from Mecca. Karha, la hajata lahum fi they, they were forced out. They really don't want to kill us. They have no intention of fighting against us. So here you have a situation with Al-Abbas. This verse is talking about a very specific situation with Al-Abbas anhu, the uncle of the Prophet When the Prophet spoke to him as he was a captive, because at the end of the day, the Prophet had to be fair. He came out with the army from Mecca, just like everybody else. So even if he didn't fight, still the Prophet had to treat him as such. So when, he, when the Prophet approached him, Al-Abbas said that I already secretly accepted Islam. So Islam was already in my heart. And indeed, he could have been truthful. SubhanAllah. You know, you know, there's a debate amongst the scholars about when Al-Abbas really accepted Islam. So Al-Abbas said, look, I really already believed I had Islam in my heart. I just came out because I was forced to and so on and so forth. And so Allah tells the Prophet wasallam to tell Al-Abbas and to tell people like him. Look, if Allah knows that that's sincerely the case with your heart, then the money that you give in ransom, Allah is going to give you something better than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. The beauty of this is that Al-Abbas had to ransom himself with some of his money, with some of his gold. And he was sincere and he was truthful. And because of that, Al-Abbas became extremely wealthy after the Battle of Badr. Right? Because he did ransom himself with his most precious provisions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him more, which is a sign that Al-Abbas truly did not want to fight the Prophet sallallahu he believed in the message of the Prophet Sallallahu and he simply had not manifested that to the public uh, yet. So this idea here that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows what's in the hearts of people, Allah knows that some people went out for different reasons. At the end of the day, it's an internal matter. If you're with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will be with you. So that's Surah Al Anfal. Surah Al Anfal focuses on the post Badr context. It's a surah of much hope. It's a surah of, uh, of, of, of victory. It's a surah of glad tidings. It's a surah that encourages the sanctity of treaties, uh, treating the prisoners of war in a certain way, upholding peace when there's room to do so, and sticking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being steadfast in the situations of battle. And you will be able to overcome larger numbers in that case. Surah at tawbah is the flip side of that. So just like, if you remember, um, the, the last three surahs that were covered, uh, there is there is a trend that we see between them. You have Al-An'am, which was the last warning to the people of Mecca. You have Al-A'raf, which are the consequences to the people of Mecca. Okay, also within Mecca. So you had Al-An'am and Al-A'raf that were two uh, Meccan surahs in the end of Mecca. Al-An'am establishes the last warning. Al-A'raf talks about the consequences for not heeding that warning. And then now you have Surah Al-Anfal, which is the battle of Badr, which is that promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of victory that came to the believers as they left Mecca, and the promise of humiliation uh, to, to, the, uh, to the oppressors and the disbelievers in Mecca. SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ stood over the bodies of the people of, uh, after Badr, the people of Mecca after Badr, that had oppressed him and oppressed the believers for so long. And he said, we have found the promise of Allah to be true to us. فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَقَّ Have you seen that what Allah has promised you to be true? Meaning we were promised when we were leaving Mecca, and we were promised that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give us victory and, and honor. Have you found the disgrace that Allah promised you 
to be true. And the Prophet ﷺ was speaking to them as they were in a ditch. Their dead bodies were in a ditch after Badr. SubhanAllah. So Al-Anfal sort of highlights now the outcome of what was talked about in Al-An'am and Al-A'raf. And then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala encourages the believers towards treaties, towards uh, maintaining peace. And then comes Surah At-Tawbah, which is now when those people turn back, when the hypocrites turn back on those treaties and people do not incline towards peace. And so Surah At-Tawbah has a completely different shift. It has a completely different tone. However, it is a very relevant Surah.